Kominich painted the picture of perfection. In 1984, America's finest, like Kathy Johnson, are looking to take over that picture. So too are Tracy Talavera and 1980 Olympic team mate Julianne McNamara. And perhaps America's next Nadia, Mary Lou Retton. These returning champions of the Caesars Palace Invitational come to life as HBO Sports presents a sports special. Women's Gymnastics Invitational. From the Sports Pavilion at Caesars Palace here in Las Vegas, Nevada, HBO Sports is proud to present the fifth annual Caesars Palace Women's Gymnastics Invitational. Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Tim McCarver, and I'm with Nancy Thies Marshall, who was an Olympic gymnast back in 1972, and HBO's own color analyst, John Triada. John, do we have a show today? It's going to be a great show today. We have four of our past champions back, and they are Tracy Televera, just a great performer on the balance beam. Julianne McNamara, a bronze medal, the world, world championships on the uneven bars, considered a real contender the for the summer of games on that event. We have Kathy Johnson. Now, Kathy, the oldest performer in this event and one of the oldest performers in the United States today, is just marvelous to look at on the floor exercise. And that Dynamo, the winner from last year, Mary Lou Retton, and I have to say she looks marvelous in the warm-ups and considered a favorite to win this event today. That sounds like a blatant prediction to me, and if that happens, she'll be the first to win win it here at Caesars Palace because no one has ever won the event two years in a row. And you had your share of success, Nancy. And these events leading up to the Olympics are very, very important. What was the feelings down on the floor before the event started? Tim, I sense a combination of, of emotions. There's a sense of camaraderie because we have the whole national team here, or most of it. They're very supportive of each other and excited to see how everybody's doing. On the other hand, those girls are also competing the against each other each very soon for those coveted spots on the Olympic team. So they're using this competition to try some new things and see how they stack up against each other. And that tension comes to fruition in Los Angeles a couple of months from now when the public address announcer says... Let the games begin. And the games are beginning at Caesars Palace here. What's in store is the first event, John? First event is vaulting, and as you can see, a very strong run is required. A good push off the horse and an acrobatic somersaulting dismount off the horse. And the first competitor for the vault, Tracy Talavera, 17 years old from Walnut Creek, California. And she trains at Golden Gate Gymnastics. Tracy's a real veteran in the sport of gymnastics, and here's a round of back handspring, Sukahara off the horse, an extremely difficult vault, and it performed very, very well. Each gymnast, of course, will have two attempts at the vault. Tracy's first attempt scored a 9.50. And now for her second attempt. Watch this. It's a round off back handspring, Sukahara, and as you can see, that was a better vault because in the first vault, she took one step on her dismount. And here, she took no steps, really stuck the vault. And here's uh, the round off, back handspring push, Sukahara back to the salt, and just a slight hop back, no major deduction. And so the final vault for Tracy Talavera, a 9.60. Will be that is her highest Dusser. score of the two vaults. Next up, Michelle Dusser, 15 years old, from Garden Grove, California. Very talented youngster, strong run, round off Sukahara. She laid it out, just piped it down at the very end. This was a, a, a fairly good vault, but what I didn't like about it is the way she piked it down and lost control on the landing. Here it is. Here's the layout, and pikes it down in the hips. Here's the score. And kind of a little hop at the end. Those are all little deductions. Score to beat, remember, is 9.60. Michelle Dusser had a 9.30. Her second attempt at the vault. She has two tries at, at the vault. The highest score will be the final score. Here is the second time up. It's another Sukahara layout. 
And as you can see, that was short, took one major step forward. This will not score as well as the first ball. Well, for her second Here's ball, score, Michelle Ducera has a 9.1, so she'll take her first ball to 9.3. And next up, Tanya Service, age 16, from St. Charles, Missouri. She trains at the National Academy of Artistic Gymnastics. And remember the score to beat a 9.60 by Tracy Talavera. Tanya is uh, an explosive gymnast. And here is a very powerful run. Sukahara layout, but lost control on her landing. A lot of steps, too, huh? A lot, a lot of steps, and every step's a tenth deduction. Here's the score. And because of those steps, Tanya Service takes a 9.25 in her first vault attempt. We're ready for vault number two. This is one of uh, Tanya's first competitions since a very serious ankle injury. She broke her ankle very severely last year. It's great seeing her back, and here's another vault. A Sukahara layout, pikes it back. One major step backwards for a... 10th deduction, this will score slightly better than last week. And it does score better, 9.35, and that's her final score. Next on the agenda, Julianne McNamara, 18 years old from Danville, California, a member of the 1980 Olympic team. And look at her ankles, really protected, tightly taped, Sukahara layout. That's him, it's, it's all those little steps that really uh, kill a gymnast when they're trying to get a good score in vaulting. Here's and as you can see, she took score, one big step back and... For Julianne McNamara. Those, those steps quite costly, a 9.40 in Julianne McNamara's first attempt. McNamara's second attempt at the vault. Probably another Sukahara with a straight body layout. Correct, and that was a much better dismount, much better landing, just a slight hop. I think that will be reflected in a much better score. Remember the score to beat a 9.60 by Tracy Talavera. And on the Sukahara, it's a half turn onto the horse, a back somersault in layout position. Watch the landing, only a slight hop backwards. Very, very good. So Julianne McNamara ties Tracy Talavera, both with a 9.6, and the little dynamo, as you say, Mary Lou Retton from Fairmont, West Virginia, only 15 years old, and she wears a size three shoe. <laughs> but look how fast she moves. I've never seen anybody move this quickly. This is a super horror with a full twist after she leaves the horse, but that was not very well controlled. She also had steps, right? Oh, a lot of steps. Uh, she was off to the side slightly. She didn't control that power. Let's see if she can control the power from those legs. Those are locomotives. Sukahara layout. Much better landing. This is a major step backwards. This would be a good score, but I've seen Mary Lou do better. But this would be a high score, well in the nines. Four feet, nine and three quarters inches tall one of five athletic children, as we said, from Fairmount, West Virginia. Here it is, Sukahara full twist, four. round nine off. Eight. Back semisole layout position with a full twist, and the lady only one step backwards. There's Corolla really watching every moment. So an excellent 9.80 in That's Mary Lou Redden's second ball, and she Michelle takes the lead. Goodwin. Next up, Michelle Goodwin, 17 years old, from Redding, PA. Score to beat, a 9.80 by Mary Lou Retton. This one was a very difficult uh, mount. It's a back handspring onto the, onto the horse and a super hollow off. Very similar to what Tracy Talavera was performing before. In fact, the same ball. Only a 9.1 for Michelle. She looked a little stiff, huh, John? Well, I think her major deduction was not only on the landing, but she did not get much distance away from the horse. Look how close she is to the horse compared to Mary Lou Retton, who flies. But that was a very good landing. This would be a better score than she received on the first ball. But she doesn't get the distance really required. And because of that, a 9.2 in the next second ball by four. Michelle Goodwin. And next up, 14-year-old Tracy Butler from Worthington, Ohio. She trains at Parquettes. And remember the score to beat, 9.80. Very precise gymnast, good run. A Sukahara layout position, but she pikes it down at the very end. Pikes it down, an interesting term. Can you explain that? Well, 
if you keep your body in layout position, that's keeping your body straight. When you pike it down, you bend at the hip. Watch. Here she is pushing off the horse, body straight, laid out. Now she pikes at the hip. And that lowers the difficulty Here's of the ball. So a pike technically is a Nine bend at the hip, three, right? That's correct. So Nine Tracy three, Butler, five, her five, second five. attempt coming up. She had a 9.35 in her first ball. attempt. The score to beat a 9.80 by Mary Lou Retton. Watch, let's see if she pikes it down this time. Layout, pikes it down again. One major step backwards, probably around the same score. Here's the second score for Tracy Butler, 9.35. And you're exactly right, a 9.35. The final score for Tracy Butler. Our next gym is Next up, Yolanda Mavity, 14 years old, from Modesto, California. She trains at the National Academy of Artistic Gymnastics. Good run, Sukahara with a full twist, and way out there, almost at the very end of the match. And since we're getting into uh, gymnastic lingo, Tim, well, she tucks it. Tucks it means she brings her knees to her chest as she does this full twist. So it's a Sukahara full twist in tuck position, bringing her knees into her chest, forming a little ball. 9.45 in her first attempt. Here it goes. It's a half turn on. Sukahara full twist, bending her knees to the chest in tuck position. A lot of height there, too, huh? She really flies. Very powerful youngster. So the second vault for Here's Yolanda Mavity. 9.55. A 9.55, a very good score, final score for Yolanda Mavity. Carrie Haney will be the last vaulter, 15 years old, from Little Rock, Arkansas. Still the score to beat, Mary Lou Retton's 9.80. Another Sukahara in layout position, a good ball. She just took one slight step backwards, and she did not pike it down. She basically kept her body straight in layout throughout the entire vault. She'll get a better score for that. Also, with Bella Caroli down in Houston, Here is the first some future gymnasts looking on. Huh? An excellent 9.55 by Carrie Haney, her second vault attempt. Sukahara in layout position, body straight. She just piped it down very slightly at the end and lost control on her landing, took a few steps. That's going to be severely deducted. So she will take her first vault and final score of 9.55, and the winner of the vault competition is that little dynamo, as you say, Mary Lou Retton. And she is just great. Watch this ball. It's a round off and layout keeps it. She doesn't pike down and she does a full twist to boot. Incredible stuff. Incredible score too. A 9.80 for a Retton. Julianne McNamara with a 9.60 ties Tracy Talavera also with the same score. So what do we have next, John? Well, we have the very exciting uneven bars. You'll see flips like this moves from the lower bar to the higher bar, and it's a very fluid, dynamic, competitive event. Sometimes known as the isometric bars, the uneven bars competition started by Yolanda Mevity. Yolanda training at the National Academy of Art Artistic Gymnastics in Eugene, Oregon. Yolanda had a slight knee bend on her mount, and every time anybody bends their knees, it's a one to three-tenth deduction. Here she goes back into the handstand. Stalled a half turn, giant swing. Watch this flip. Front somersault out of a half turn under the bar. Getting set for her dismount now. Another giant swing. Toe on, front with a half turn and an exceptional landing. She looked so unsure on that landing though. Well, she was kind of surprised. She had a lot of difficulty in her uh, practice session, her warm session, they couldn't hit any of her, uh, her moves, so she must be very happy. So 9.40 for Yolanda Mavity. Next on the agenda, Tracy Butler. 1983 USA Championship, she placed first in the junior division. The score to beat a 9.40. What a great crowd here at Caesars watching this uh, youngster perform, and I really like the way she performs on everything. Very precise. Here's a front somersault, down to the low bar. A pirouette, getting set for her dismount, giant swing, another giant swing with a full twisting back somersault dismount. You mentioned the word precise, 
That's a precise word. Her movements appear to be so well-defined and crisp. Well, I believe she's a very intelligent youngster and has a, a good understanding of the sport and concentrates beautifully. Outstanding, a 9.60 for Tracy Butler. So Tracy becomes the leader with that 9.60 in the uneven bar competition. So we go from the precision of Tracy Butler to the explosive power of Mary Lou Retton. And power is what you're going to see. She has a very difficult beginning, which includes the Retton flip. That's a reverse heck, a release, and here comes the Retton flip. A bar beat flip to the top bar. Only she's performing it in the world today. Mary Lou's getting set for her dismount. A front somersault at pike position with a half turn and a great landing. Tim, this is going to be a very, very high score. No one knows better than that man right there, Bella Caroli, who is Mary Lou's trainer, with what reckless abandon she treats her body. Unbelievable. Well, let's take a look at the Retton flip. Here's a giant swing. Reverse hecked. And here comes the flip. She's going to bring her body into the low bar, up, front flip, into a sitting position on the top bar. This is the Retton flip. Only one in the world performing today. And look at this dismount and the way she now the landing. Well, she nails herself the highest score yet. A 9.90 for Mary Lou Retton. Next up, Tracy Talavera. Score to beat an incredible 9.90. Tracy looks concerned, not the normal confidence you would see. And she had a very difficult time on warm-ups. And here she did a a release over the top bar, and you can see just a major fall, and every time you fall, that's a five-tenth deduction. A tough break. Would her height be a disadvantage in this event? Well, she's grown a lot. This is a, a, a story that we are pretty familiar with, and here's a dismount. She grew very rapidly over, over a very short period of time, and I believe the only event that's really still hurting today are the uneven bar. She's not as strong as she should be and I think she's working on it. But she's disappointed, obviously. Here's a, her mount, a straddle over the low bar, not a very difficult mount. And here is the, the she just Here's pops the, the bar right out of her hands. This is very unfortunate. It is unfortunate, and Tracy Talavera has a 9.05 on the uneven bars. The score to beat, 9.90. Next up, Michelle Doucere. Michelle is going to start coming into some of her stronger events and uneven bars. Talk about extension, flexibility, and grace. Watch. Stall the shoot. Look at the legs flexing into the shoulders. Here's a front somersault. Very smooth movements. Toe point. Very talented youngster. Here's a dismount coming up. Giant swing. Front somersault with a half turn. Big smile. And a real neat routine. This, this kid is somebody we must really watch for the Olympic Games. So you're saying she gets a 10 point for her smile alone, right? <laughs> I'd give her at least 10 for that. <laughs> Here's the stall to shoot. And a giant swing. And watch this front somersault way up there. Back down to the low bar. Very neat work and Here's precise. The score. And there's that 10 point smile of hers. But the score, a 9.70, a good score, but not enough to overcome Mary Lou Retton. Here's Julianne McNamara, and some consider this her strongest event, John. This is her strongest event. She's considered one of the tops of the world. Won a, a bronze medal at the World Championships on this event. Very powerful, very quick performer. Reverse hecked, way up there. But she got lost. This is unbelievable. Julianne really, in a sense, almost forgot her routine and just couldn't continue and took extra swings. Does that come from lack of concentration? Or? I have no idea except that she does, in warmth and everything else, she just didn't look as prepared as she normally would be. Now look at this. A double back somersault landing on her hands and her backside is a five-tenth deduction. 
with the extra swings in between the routine, this is disaster for Julianne McNamara. And you can see the disaster on her face, so 9.10 for Julianne McNamara. She looks very unhappy. But Mary Lou Retton is very happy with this incredible performance. Tim, she's like a train that can't be stopped. She might be the next Nadia, but it's going to be an American Nadia, an American gymnast, and look at this high dismount. She's explosive, she's powerful, she's everything we want. And in first place, Michelle Dussert second, and Tracy Butler with a 9.60 is third. So after two events, Mary Lou Retton has the lead, followed by Michelle Dussert, Tracy Butler, and Yolanda Mavity. Coming up, a very interesting event, the balance beam. Some feel uh, that it is the most difficult event. Look how narrow that beam is. The beam is only five inches wide, and to will test it Carrie will be Haney. Carrie Haney. Carrie goes right up into the handstand, bends her elbows just slightly. That's a deduction. Here's a strength move, planche. So many movements are uh, required on the balance beam. You must have good acrobatic somersaults, and I think you'll see one coming up here. A front somersault, an acrobatic movement. Back somersault, another acrobatic movement. Dance is so important. I think the Soviets have proven that with their ballet training, huh? Oh, the Soviets are just wonderful to watch, and so are the Chinese. Many of the gymnasts, when they watch the Chinese, and they say they have such smooth arm movements, they say that Chinese work as if they have no bones in their arms compared to somebody who is a lot stiffer. And I would say that Kerry, who's coming along very well, is not as smooth as many of the other performers. Look how stiff her arms are. But she's right on. She's not wobbling, and she's not falling off. Half a point deduction for falling off, right? Just kills you. Back somersault in tight position. I'm going to test you later on about Pike. Uh, <laughs> back handspring. Back handspring. Double twisting back somersault. Just put her legs apart slightly. It's a very good routine for this youngster. So, congratulations from a coach and a hug from Mary Lou Retton. Worthy hug, too. Her score being 9.50. The next competitor, Tracy Butler. The score to beat, 9.50. Let's see if Tracy could carry uh, her very precise and beautiful work onto the balance beam. She used the trampette to get up on the balance beam, <laughs> right? <laughs> she's, she's small. Doesn't she look sure-footed? Yes, she does. I know what you mean by precision when you watch her work. You notice also while she's on the beam, she's on her toes, which is another very good indication of somebody who is very comfortable. Back handspring, back layout, and not a wobble. Huge split leap. She really extended on that. Side aerial. This kid's performing as if she's on floor, not on a, uh, a narrow beam. She makes it look easy, and here's her planche. Back into the handstand. Excellent balance. She's demonstrating a lot of strength in that uh, planche also. Now her dismount. Round off. Double twisting back somersault. Oh, this is beautiful. What a wonderful routine. And that's why I think this kid has a good chance of making the Olympic team. Well, who did it? The butler did it. One <laughs> Tracy butler, huh? Take one more look at it. She certainly did do it. Watch this. It's a round off back semisold and layout position on the beam. Not a wobble. Here are the scores. Not a hesitation. That's a 9.70. Outstanding 9.70 for Tracy Butler, and she is the current leader. And for the first time today, we'll have a look at Kathy Johnson. will be Kathy Johnson. Member of the USA Olympic team, along with Tracy Talavera and Julianne McNamara back in 1980. 
Well, you said the magic word, 1980, and uh, that was a, a major disappointment for everybody, including Kathy, but she's remained 24 years of age, the oldest lady in the sport of gymnastics. I think that's marvelous, but she's having her problems. The disappointment, of course, the boycott imposed by President Carter. She didn't look as strong as I've seen her in the past. And that was a good back layout. So far, so good. Kathy was originally ranked 11th all around in the world. Straddle jump. Watch Kathy's arms. She has much more fluid arms. She, uh, I call them Chinese arms now. No bones about it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Two handstands, split, and off. Oh, Five-tenth deduction. Tim, I have never seen Kathy fall off from that move. That was basically, I think, a lack of, uh, of concentration. I'm surprised. I'm shocked. This event is difficult enough without falling off on the easy things. So she can fare no better than a 9.50, correct? That's correct. That's a 5 10th deduction. That's huge in this event, in this competition. Kathy's getting set for a dismount. A double twisting back somersault, but it's not going to be a good score. Don Peele is trying to explain to Kathy what went wrong. And he's explaining that she just undershot it, didn't go around enough into the handstand position, got caught, and just turned off. So a disappointing 9.25 in Kathy Johnson's first event this afternoon. Now Mary Lou Retton. 1984 McDonald's American Cup champion. What a mouth that was. She just flies up to a standing position on the beam. She has the legs to do it. Nothing to it, huh? <laughs> Watch this. Back somersault. Solid. This was considered one of her, well, to be honest with you, this was her weakest event. She's made tremendous strides and improvements. We mentioned the Soviets in their ballet lessons, ballet training. Mary Lou has been training in ballet since the age of four. Good front somersault there. Back somersault. Wait until you see her dismount. She does a double back somersault off the beam. I can see what you meant about uh, why this wouldn't be her best event, because it requires more finesse than power, huh? That's a very, uh, uh, very good observation. Uh, a lot of finesse, acrobatics, dance movements, but she can't rely upon that raw power that she has. But she can do it, and she can show it at certain times, and she can show it on her dismount. So let's watch. Let's see if she really takes that power up there. Punch, double back, somersault, way up there, and a great landing. Oh, brother. Mm. Well, Mary Lou Retton has won the first two events today, the balls and the uneven bars, and her superb performance on the balance beam has netted her a 9.85. That's a great routine. Wonderful. Well, the next to the competition, Michelle Doucere finished first on the balance beam in the USA. Opposed Japan in 82. Strong event for her. Yes, yeah, she uh, is going to really use what I consider her major strength. That was a slight wobble there on the, on the mount, maybe a, a half a tenth off. But she's very flexible. She has great dance ability, uh, extension to her work. She, concentra she concentrates very well. And there's a side something. Another very slight, slight wobble, maybe a half a tenth of a deduction. But very smooth, a very soft touch on the beam. She doesn't pound the beam, she kind of works with it. Interesting statement. Certainly a another reason why ballet comes into play on the beam. Back some assault, layout position, steps out, not a wobble, not a hesitation. This is one of the young 
and talented gymnast. And if I was Kathy Johnson and Tracy Talavera, I'd watch Michelle Dussair like a hawk. Here's a dismount, a triple twisting back somersault. I'm surprised. I didn't expect her to throw that. That's an extremely difficult dismount and makes this really, aside from the smaller wobbles, just an absolutely wonderful routine. Not only is Tracy Talavera and Kathy Johnson watching, but I watch this like a hawk. Watch it. Three times, three twists in layout position. Here we go. Once, twice, and here comes the third one, squeezing it around and a very good control on the landing. Exceptional. Outstanding performance, a 9.75 for Michelle Doucet. Last in the competition for the balance beam, Tracy Talavera. Scored a beat of 9.85 by Mary Lou Retton. Well, Tracy had a very difficult time on, on, uh, on the uneven bars. Let's see how she does on balance beam. A great beginning, a back handspring onto the beam, followed by two additional back handsprings. Very high difficulty, showing a lot of risk and originality in that move. Tracy has not looked like the Tracy of old. Last year, she left uh, training with Dick Moverhill. Now training near her hometown. Considered one of the top beam performers in the world today. But like in anything, Tim, sometimes people wonder, not what you did in the past, but what you're going to do right now. You think she's lost her competitive edge? I don't think she lost the competitive edge. There's a good side summing, back layout. No, but I think that she has really got to get herself into competitive gear. She looks a little heavy to me. And we're all pulling for Tracy. I would like to see her make the team. She has a lot of experience. She has a great international uh, uh, recognition factor. And here's her dismount, a double back somersault. And here is an example. It's, this was a very good routine, and to fall on a double back somersault with a five-tenth reduction just kills her. So for Tracy Talavera, a 9.40. She's counting on her leg because she knows that could have been a 9.9 without that 5 tenth deduction. So a 9.40 for Tracy Talavera. Not really even close to the incredible performance by Mary Lou Retton, who wins her third straight event, followed by Michelle Lucer and Tracy Butler. So after three events, Mary Lou Retton way out in front of Michelle Lucer and Tracy Butler. You know, Tim, this is 1984, and the Olympic Games are right upon us. What happens from now on is absolutely crucial to our gymnasts. Crucial indeed, and our Nancy Thies Marshalls had a chance to find out what's going through their minds. How about ice cream? Ice cream. Delicious. <laughs> Fattening. <laughs> Dating. <laughs> out of the question. <laughs> Hopefully in the future. <laughs> 1980. Disappointing. Boycott. Gold medal. The ultimate long time dream. The giggly responses of a typical teenager take on a more serious tone in an Olympic year. For girls like Mary Lou Retton and 1980 Olympian Julianne McNamara, this is the year of opportunity, the chance to make dreams of gold come true. These two gymnasts are not the average girl next door. They represent the Olympic hopefuls of this country who have a lot more on their minds. In these next few months, they will spend four to six hours a day, every day, inside the gym to prepare themselves physically and mentally for what lies ahead. Each decision, each workout, each competition is an important scene in the ongoing drama. The last act will take place at the Olympic Games this summer in Los Angeles. The scene is the competitive arena. The characters are the athletes, coaches, and parents. And the theme, what it takes to make an Olympic team, what it takes to win a gold medal. The American gymnast has not competed for Olympic gold since 1976. The frustration of the Moscow boycott complicates the 1984 quest for gold. The leftover gymnasts of the 1980 team were faced with the decision to quit or continue for four years and face the pressure of younger talent at their heels. Although we didn't go, it was still an honor to be a part of the team. And I think I knew from then that I would try again for 84. I guess four years ago when I came on the scene and, you know, 
the veterans that were around then were saying, oh, you know, here comes another one. But, you know, that's the way it goes, and that's what we need to keep pro progressing in our sport. It pushes me, too. I mean, because I want to be on the team. So when I see the newcomer, I go, yeah, I want you to do well. I want you to be there, but I want to be there, too. Many of the top gymnasts in 1980 decided to prolong their careers. In pursuing their goals, some have found it necessary to play musical coaches. Bella Caroli, synonymous with gold medalist Nadia Comaneci, is at the center of this controversy. Recently, current national champion Diane Durham left his program in Houston. At the same time, Julianne McNamara decided to join him. Although questioned by the gymnastics community, Caroli sees some value to the changes. If somebody comes at that point to say, hey, I cannot handle anymore, uh, my own situation or I don't feel excitement, I don't feel I'm helped enough or whatever reason, arrived at a point when she said, well, I better quit than to continue. Yes, I think in this situation it would be better to change and to try again in another environment. Basically, I just, I needed a change and I needed to be in an environment where I could best be prepared for this summer and I decided that this was the place to do it. Since joining Caroli's camp, Julianne scored a perfect 10 on the uneven bars at the 84 American Cup competition. And Diane Durham posted an impressive victory in a recent international meet. So these changes may be positive for both women. Changes and pressures aside, there is one shining star on the Olympic horizon, and that is Mary Lou Retton. The consistency of this athlete is something to bank on, and for her, the secret formula is her coach. You know, just blocked and straight. All right. All right. So he gets you motivated so well. He's really emotional and he, he shows how he feels, you know. If he's mad, he's, go he's going to yell. And if he's happy, he's going to show it. And he hugs you and, you know, it makes you feel so much better. And he really gets you psyched up for competitions. I try to advise them. Go in shopping. Go do something. Go crazy. Go to the pizza place having fun. And that's what they are doing. And they're having a lot of fun. And I know, for me, as a coach, it's very important to have happy kids into the gym. The challenges seem overwhelming. A disheartening boycott, injuries, fatigue, the need for success on the international scene, all typical Olympic year pressures on athletes, many of whom are barely 15. And now, last-minute coaching changes. Yet here in Houston, Bella Caroli thinks he has found the right ingredients to create Olympic champions. in this drama, a team medal is not in the script for 1984, but there are many chances for individual medals in Los Angeles. Being here in Houston, talking to Bella Caroli, it's an inspiring experience. He's a man with much wisdom, much energy, and enthusiasm. And all of those qualities may just bring the United States their first Olympic medal in women's gymnastics. I'm Nancy Thies Marshall. Tim, it will be interesting to see how Julianne McNamara improves and regains her enthusiasm now that she's made the change to Bella Caroli. Well, speaking of enthusiasm, an enthusiastic Mary Lou Retton leads going into the final event, which is... Floor exercise, and we're going to see outstanding tumbling, dance, leaps, jumps, all in tune with the music. It's going to be a great show. So the final event of floor exercise. Will be Carrie Haney. First gymnast, Carrie Haney who trains with Bella Caroli in Houston, another of the gymnasts that train with Bella. Tim, one of the things I'd like to bring to your attention are the very difficult tumbling passes that you will see today. Uh, most likely there'll be three or four of these passes, and they have to be smoothed over with beautiful dance and choreography. Terry's first pass, round of back hands, double back with a full twist, very difficult. But as you can see, she's a step forward with two or three steps. That will be a fairly significant deduction, most likely three tenths. And of course, three tumble runs are compulsory in the floor exercise, not to exceed a minute and a half, right? That's correct. I see you've been doing your homework. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Carrie just completed her second tumbling pass, a double twisting back somersault.
Now she's getting into the corner, working her way into the corner for her dismount. This will be her last tumbling pass. But you can see in her dance, she was kind of stiff. We mentioned that on beam, an area that she has to improve on. Double back somersault, out of control, off the floor X area, she crossed the white line for a tenth reduction, and every step was a tenth. She must have lost four tenths on that. A good routine, Ken, but as you can see, this is a young, developing talent going against the big guns. So she'll have to polish her skills for future events. And here's a tumbling pass. It's a round off back handspring. And this is the double back somersault with a full twist. Extremely difficult, and she was way up there. A little short, almost touched the floor, she said to herself, I better not touch that floor. <laughs> So 9.25 for Carrie Haney, talking with her coach, Bella Caroli. Next contestant, Yolanda Mavity. The score she must top is 9.25. A strong patriotic theme here, John. And here's, a, here's a young gymnast who's coming along really well. Bell back some salt in pike position. Bending at the hip on that pike. Do you notice the expression is so much better? And carry uh, more experience, more danceability. Triple twisting back some assault. Very pretty. Watch these little steps along the side of the mat. performer. Very strong and very cute. A nice little presentation here. Stopping the mat with her hands, things like that. The crowd loves it. Getting set for a dismount. If she nails the dismount in, she'll have a very good score. Double back, somersault. Oh boy. for the fall and one tenth for going out of bounds. Six tenth deduction at least. That's a shame because this was a very solid and a very good routine. You can see she's disappointed. I would imagine she's disappointed because she fell after a splendid routine, but she got a 9.05. And her coach Dick Mulvihill saying, get him next time. The next gymnast to compete in the floor exercise And the next competitor is Tracy Talavera, who is getting a last reprieve today and the floor exercise because she has not had a good meet, has she, John? No, kind of a tough time on bars and beam, but off to a great start here. Double back somersault in pike position, keeping her knees straight, good controlled landing. Her next pass, round off back handspring, double back somersault in tuck position, a great landing, very well controlled. All the leaps, jumps, turns that are required as part of floor exercise, working around the mat. I was going to say, Tracy, this by far her best event of the day, so far. It's really nice seeing her competitive instinct, that she's not giving up. A few rough events and uh, off to a great start. And her dismount. Round of back handspring, double twisting back somersault. It's a very clean, very well presented routine. And I'm happy that Trace is ending on a real positive note. No doubt about it. Let her know how you feel. Tracy Talavera. Very, very popular. Tracy Talavera. She is probably the most recognized gymnast, I think, in the meet today. Would you say that? Absolutely, and uh, the crowd loves her, and the athletes and coaches think that she's just a terrific person. Uh, she is a terrific person. And here is one of her tumbling movements. Ronald's back, handspring. 
double back somersault in tough position. This was her second pass, and look at the control on the landing. The average, 9.8. A 9.8 for Tracy Talavera. She is our current leader in the floor exercise. And Michelle Ducer is next. The score to beat, 9.80. Michelle could do it. She has the tumbling, she has the grace, the dance, and watch this performance. She won the floor exercise at Caesars Palace last year, right? Sure did. It was very theatrical. Oh. Ooh. That, that is a, a crunch if I've ever seen that. It was a double back somersault with a full twist. Did not get up high enough and didn't get around fast enough. Very close to a serious injury there, huh, John? Sure. I mean, her face was right in the mat. Triple twisting back somersault, and that's incredible that after having such a severe fall that she can come back with such a, a good second pass. Watch the dance. Michelle Lucer. The last pass. Work of air. Double twisting back somersault. Very clean. But she got a real, a real bad start. She's going to get hit hard on the beginning. Michelle Lucer. Came very, very close to a very serious accident. Watch this mount. She loses five tenths on it. And remember, five tenths out of a possible 10 0. Here it is a double back somersault with a full twist, not up high enough and not getting around fast enough. And look how close she comes. Her head right into the mat. Still earned herself a 9.35. She's with her coach, Don Peters who looks equally dismayed. Exercise, Kathy Johnson. And Kathy Johnson in her second event of the day. The balance beam and now the floor exercise. The score to beat, a 9.80 by Tracy Talavera. And that's gonna be a tough score to beat, but Kathy can do it. And what she brings to the party, maturity, experience, and she has great presentation on floor and dance. Double back, semisole, pike position, just a few steps, about a two-tenth deduction. But very graceful. Some youngsters get out there and are have a look of fear in their eyes and in their face, and Kathy, you can see, really is enjoying herself. One and a half twisting back, semisole to a back, semisole. That pass wasn't quite as difficult as some of the other passes you will see later on. Beautiful routine, isn't it? Oh, yes. And this, this is the time the crowd really starts to get behind it. Does that affect the judges? Sure it does, it affects the judges, and it, and it affects also Kathy Johnson, the other crowd behind her. Here's her last pass, round off back handspring, double twisting back somersault. It's a beautiful routine, Tim. The only criticism I have is that the difficulty of the tumbling passes, it, they have to be increased, it, it has to be more difficult. She has everything going for her, the maturity, the experience, and it's such a graceful routine. There has to be seven elements of difficulty in every routine, right? Yes, that's correct. This is one of the very important tumbling movements. It's the second pass, round off, one and a half twisting back somersault to a back somersault step out. It's a nice pass, but not difficult enough. And because of that, she ends up with a 9-7-0, which is a good score but not good enough to beat Tracy Next Talavera. But here's an athlete who can, Mary, Mary Lou Retton. 
talk about difficulty in tumbling. This is her forte. Even the music says she's going to take off. Double back layout way up in the sky. That's a double back somersault with a straight body position. She's one of the very few gymnasts in the world currently doing that move. Split leap, split leap, extension. Don Peters, the head Olympic coach for the women, says that watching Mary Lou Retton is like watching O.J. Simpson run. Since she's a uniquely gifted athlete. And watch this for a second tumbling pass, talking about being unique. A double back somersault with a full twist. And flies through the air. A little stumble there, about a tenth deduction. Powerful music, forceful music. And her dismount. Side semi out of the front of assault, way up in the air. A great routine and an incredible performance in the all-around for Mary Lurek. All four routines were marvelous. She has won the first three events. The vault, the uneven bars, and the balance beam. And now another extraordinary performance in the floor exercise. I believe she's won over the crowd. And the score, a 9.9. .9. And that puts her in the number one spot. Tracy the only Butler. one that can upend her. Tracy Butler. <laughs> Watch the personality of this youngster in action. Double back to the soul, high position for a mount, but not strong enough in difficulty compared to a Mary Lou Ray. She is the least inclined of the gymnast to move after she lands, right? Well, that's a, a very strong indication of a champion having the ability to control their landing. Also, I understand she puts glue on her feet. <laughs> no glue there, my friend. Just remember, just a year ago, this kid was a, a junior gymnast. And look at the maturity. Nice arms, nice movements. And a change of pace. Time for a little dancing. And her dismount. Round of back handspring, double twisting back somersault. Such a pretty presentation, but the difficulty level is not high enough yet to compete against Mary Lou Red. So a very inspiring performance by Tracy Butler. She was just wonderful in the all-around today. Four excellent performances, high scores in every event. And in order to make that Olympic team, you got to go four for four. Round off back handspring. This was her mount, a double back somersault in high position, and that landing always under control. So a 9.65 by Tracy Butler fails to overcome the 9.90 by Mary Lou Retton. What a performance today at Caesars Palace by Mary Lou Retton. Watch her fly. Another opportunity to take a look at her double back layout. One of the very few people in the world currently doing this. So that gives her first place in the floor exercise, followed by Tracy Talavera and Kathy Johnson. So Mary Lou Retton with a record-setting 39.45 here at Caesars Palace in the all-around. Followed by Butler, Doucere, Talavera, and Haney and Mavity are tied. And with Mary Lou Retton now is Nancy Thies Marshall. Nancy? Mary Lou, after today's performances, how do you feel about your chances now for a medal in Los Angeles? Well, if I keep, you know, my difficulty and my routines keep upgrading and if I keep 
the good attitude that I have and the training under Bella, everything's going to go good. One of the things that's hard at this point is to stay up for the competition and to be on top of things. How are you going to do that and stay for so long? Well, Bella is great. You know, he gets us mentally and physically ready for meets. And our workouts are more consistent and more intense, and it's great. Well, congratulations today. Thank you. We saw a lot of great performances, especially from this one right here, and I think we can look forward to medals in Los Angeles, especially from Mary Lou. Now back to you, Tim. All right, Nancy, and as you remind us, the road to L.A. is paved with gold for Mary Lou Retton. What an absolutely incredible performance today. It was great. Uh, never happened before, somebody winning all those events. And for the Chinese, it's the year of the rat. But for me, it's the year of the Retton. She's established herself as the number one gymnast in the United States, the premier gymnast, and certainly a candidate for the gold medal in the Summer Games. And she is being joined by Tracy Butler and Michelle Ducer, among other young gymnasts. So it seems like the young gymnasts are the ones that are taking over. Well, if I was uh, Kathy Johnson, Julianne McNamara, Tracy Talavera, I'd watch out. Those kids look very, very good. Marvelous gymnastic event today from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. I'm Tim McCarver for Nancy Thies Marshall and my pal John Triata. Thanks very much for watching. Extremely difficult.